Hey everybody, it's Kneecap here, and in this video I'm going to be going over uh, the WoW Q&A that was today, 10-5, October 5th, um, kind of uh, going through the questions that interested me the most. Uh, this one was fairly interesting. Uh, sometimes I, I literally have something to say about every question. This one, not quite every question, maybe like two-thirds. Um, so I take notes as I go, so if it looks like I'm reading off something, it's like I'm reading off my own notes. Uh, first thing is, will legendary drop rate be increased again? Um, they're still looking into that, and uh, they're likely to increase it. Uh, so your alt or new character can get legendaries, the first two legendaries at least, so that they can at least feel competitive. Um, if you get all legends for your class, you will get tokens that you can trade to your alt. You choose the class, so you choose. So if your main's a warrior and your alt a mage, or the alt you want a legendary gone to mage, if you have all warriors, so that's Prot, Arms, and Fury, Legendaries, uh, you will get a token instead of a Legendary when it's time when it comes up again to get another Legendary, and you'll be able to choose um, what class for that token. So uh, you, you choose Mage and send it to your Mage, I assume. Um, any plans on balancing specs before Arturus? Um, probably not. They feel things are balanced for the new raid. Um, obviously, they might not be, but on their data says it is. Um, between new tier sets and uh, and then the new raid encounters mechanics, they feel it is balanced. We just can't see it yet because we're not in the new raid. Um, and he admits, and this is with Ian, uh, he admits that Tomb might not be balanced right now, but that's because of, you know, you don't have the new set bonuses yet. Um, things aren't scaled with the new gear yet. Um, if it's not balanced, of course, after the new raid is out, then they'll address it then. So, you know, like a week after the raid, like normal, if there's a class that completely sucks, they usually fix it. Um, thinking behind set bonuses, pushing you towards certain talents and abilities. Um, this was uh, specifically asked about Demon Hunters, but uh, there's more than one class affected by this. Um, Ian says they tried to be in the middle. Some things are very general or passive. Um, other things are specific in set bonuses. Uh, want, they want there to be some things that aren't passive because they want you to have to like do a slight change or rotation or just um, have to alter your playstyle a little bit to get that benefit from the uh, from the set bonus. So that's their thinking behind it. Um, they talked a lot about the Mythic Dungeon Invitational, so I, I only had a few comments on it. Um, basically, they love uh, they love Mythic Dungeons and Keystones. They think that's been one of the biggest successes of this expansion. I tend to agree with that. Um, with less player base and then people not having as much time um, in just the gaming uh, the gaming world right now is more um, centered around quicker reward, and so not three hours of raiding. Um, so this is a way that you can take like a half hour and get something really good. I think it has been a huge success. They think it's been a huge success. Um, they're going to keep tracking, you know, people doing with the dungeons, who's doing the best, what classes are doing the best, and they're going to keep uh, keep up doing the Mythic Dungeon Invitational as well and do more of those, they, they, they think this is a, something that they hit really well on, so I think they're going to try to milk it for everything they can. Um, basically, the question, next question is about um, new the item level for your followers. A lot of people don't care about followers. Uh, however, if you have leveled them up, you probably care because you've put a lot of time into doing it. Um, new follower item level, top is 950, but the cost for missions is really high without the rewards being much better. Um, there was a hotfix on this. I didn't uh, see it myself and they bump the rewards up a little bit more, they're going to continue to look at it. They want the missions to be rewarding because you took the time to level them up. So if you took the time to get all your guys up to Legendary, all your followers up to Legendary, they all have max gear on, you know, you might as well get some rewards for doing that because some people don't do it at all, which is fine too, of course. Um, not gear rewards, of course. Obviously, you have the mission gear, uh, the mission to go a raid boss gear. Well, but besides that, you know, gold, resources, Artifact power, etc. Um, should the Argus whistle be account wide? So if you don't know, you can buy a Flight Master's whistle on Argus. Uh, it's like a just an item, whatever. However, it's only for one character, so you'd have to get up your reputation, and everything with all characters, uh, all your alts, and everything. Um, Ian said within the next day or two, we'll expect a hot fix for that. Um, it doesn't make much sense that they didn't put it in. He he was really thankful for this question because it's just not something that they thought about. Uh, question about artifact knowledge cap. Um, some people still don't know this. Uh, this was in the last patch. 
Every week it goes up one higher, so your artifact knowledge is going to keep going up until uh, artifact knowledge 55, that's the cap. Once you get to 55, it shouldn't ever need to be raised more than that, uh, based on what they were saying, because it, it's going to be so ridiculous, the amount of artifact power you get at that point, that you should have all your uh, all your traits uh, up, and you should be have full access to the Light Crucible. Uh, here's a good question uh, the spider <laughs> that they never addressed before today. The Spider World boss in Suramar that drops Prolonged Power Rank 3. So this boss um, has only been up once, maybe twice, but I know only once since Prolonged Power Rank 3 was available. Uh, they try to change the rotation to be more fixed and less random for old world bosses and world bosses in general because before it was completely random. Uh, however, uh, this was kind of an interesting point. They kind of got off talking about how they kind of like that not many people have the Prolonged Power Rank 3. Um, the reason why they want to fix it is because this is the only thing really that's like that in the game right now and he wishes that more professions would have had that so that way there would have been top level people so only five people in your guild have this he, he would or one person in your guild has prolonged power rank three he would like maybe only one blacksmith to have this and it kind of makes you more important it makes you uh it, it I, I, I like it too. It, it's not good for equality in the game, which is what they've been going towards. But that's more gear-wise. This is more economically, and I think more competition, more uh, differentiation is actually a good thing for that. I actually kind of like that too. I wasn't. I, I've been annoyed because I have an alt mage that really needs prolonged power rank three. I didn't even have this mage level up available to get it when the boss was up, and so I've never seen it with my mage. Uh, but I, it, it, when you think about it like that, it's kind of cool that I don't have it. On my mage, uh, even though I would like to have it. Um, any development with the Sylvanas and Grey Main storylines? Um, he says, of course. Uh, there are a lot of characters in the world of Azeroth in the storyline right now, and they will be going back to it eventually. Right now, of course, they're focusing on. Uh, he he really pointed out like they're kind of focused on the unity right now, uh, just trying to kill the Legion. So I'm guessing after the Legion's defeated, um, now we're gonna have to settle some differences between us. I personally think. Um, Sylvanas is going to um, have some sort of redemption story with her sister being back, um, Illyria, with Turlin. So I think um, there's going to be some sort of redemption story with that. Now, I don't know what that's going to mean. Is it going to mean Sylvanas leaves the Horde? Is it going to mean, you know, something's going to happen. Uh, it, it, I, I think it'll be interesting. Hopefully they, do. they have the opportunity to make it interesting. Um, they asked a question, last boss in Mythic Raid drops one mount instead of two, like Mists of Pandaria. I wrote down, that's a first world problem, um, I, and, and, you know, not many people are clearing Mythic content fully, um, like, when it's current at least, and, uh, I, in my opinion, not everyone in the Raid should get the mount, uh, mounts should be something, especially mounts like that should be a little bit more coveted, a little bit more random, a little bit more rare. Uh, so here's the longest thing that they talked about, and it's something that, have been asked about a million times but no one like asked about by the community but never answered so why so much rng and legion i wrote a lot down here um randomness is always at the core of wow or any rpg randomness and legion is in more places but they tried to make each choice have less impact uh here's an example loot years ago world of warcraft was more stingy with loot it was called raid or die if you didn't raid you had no good loot loot was scarce now it's easier to get loot from many different sources. These sources are like world quests, uh, mythic plus dungeons, these random world bosses everywhere, and they keep updating new world bosses. Of course, you have the LFR, um, and then there's still professions as well that can you can level up the loot decently with. So you, you can get you can get up to normal or heroic level fairly easily. Now, of course, you can't get up to mythic level fairly easy, but you shouldn't be able to. Um, uh, so you get loot from many sources. Um, they put bonus rolls in place, um, kind of anti-Titan forging. Uh, like that's that's why those things exist. However, the the bonus rolls was good. he made a good point on that. The reason why there's bonus rolls, which are completely RNG, is because back in the day, um, let's say there was a trinket that every mage needed, or mage and warlock needed, and um, you cleared you were you it was like the seventh boss in a raid, and you got to clear that boss for like three months before the next raid came out and it only dropped one time so now let's say one mage in your guild got it another mage and the two warlocks didn't get it with the bonus roll system all four of those people have a chance to get that trinket 
Um, then maybe they'll get artifact power every time, but at least they had what seemed like a, a, a better chance to get it, where it, it was still RNG before, but the RNG really, there was going to be very small chance that all four of them would ever get it. The chance that all four of them would get it with the bonus rolls is much higher. I thought that was a very good way to explain it, and I totally agree with it. Um, so he said he did have one regret on the randomness of Legion, and a lot of people will be happy to hear that it's legendaries. Um, this would not be an RNG system if they could go back in time and do it. They would probably scrap legendaries. Um, however, he did hint that maybe he would. They just all would have been utility. So like Prides, every legendary would have had a different little cool utility to it instead of deep, DPS throughput and then other ones because basically. Um, some people got crap legendaries at the start, especially before they made them more readily easy to get. Um, and you were just screwed. Um, if you didn't have one of those top legendaries, then you were just underperforming compared to other people who did have it. Um, I remember I didn't get my first legendary until like people who play so much less than me um, had two legendaries before I got one. And I play a lot. Um, and I especially at the beginning expansion before I had my son. I mean, I was playing a ton of World of Warcraft. And I, um, I didn't, couldn't even get my first one, so I was underperforming. I had no chance of being right at that time. I was uh, holy pally, doing best I could, but there was no way I could even kind of compete with damage when people had um, the belt or the ring or whatever, you know, or the cloak at the time. Uh, you know, there's just no way I could compete with that. So um, some people just quit, some people re-rolled, etc. They don't like that. And I don't expect to see this in the future. If they have a system like this, they will be all um, just utility type. So you you put on this one for this boss, etc. Um, what they might not like about that is you have to keep a bunch of gear in your bags uh, to keep swapping out for every boss. So they might just scrap the system completely, which will make a lot of people happy. Um, there's a question about connecting servers because some small realms are struggling. I wish what they would address is the horde alliance imbalance on servers, uh, PvP servers especially. However, they didn't address that, so they just talked about smaller realms are struggling. Um, yes, they are planning on helping out these smaller realms. They need they needed to fix the infrastructure on Blizzard's end, uh, but that work is largely already completed. Um, at this point, they're discussing which realms are the best to connect, and they are going to fix it because um, nothing's worse than playing on a realm with low population. It's going to force you to either change realm or just quit playing the game, and they don't want you to quit playing the game, so they're going to, you know, combine some realms and um, have a higher population, easier to do stuff, better economy, more gold. Um, and the big reason, if people don't know, is uh, this game used to, it's still popular, it's still like one of the most popular games, but it used to be so ridiculously popular that they needed all these servers. They kind of actually added a few too many, in my opinion, even back then, kind of thinking it was going to keep growing, and instead it went back down, regressed to the mean. And um, now they just have all these servers and not enough people to fill them. Uh, will there be flying in Argus? Uh, there's going to be no flying in Argus. This was really interesting to me because the way it was designed. Now, if you notice when you're on Argus and you're looking off into the uh, distance, you see like all this land, you see this cool backdrop. Now, this was designed this way on purpose to try to make it look like a, it's because it, it's its own planet. It's Azeroth, you know, it's it's the Western Kingdom, it's Northern, you know, the Eastern Kingdoms, it's North Rend, it's Mr. Pandaria, you know, it's all this area, all this ocean. Um, it's that same amount of space, you know, that, that's the idea of it. Maybe it's bigger, maybe it's slightly smaller, but the same idea. But they weren't actually going to put in that much land area that you could actually go to. So, um, it's all backdrop, basically, and it's just those three little islands that we have access to. Um, so, it's, it's appeared to be created larger than it is. Once you could fly, you would be flying towards this backdrop. And then all of a sudden, you'd never reach it. You'd just realize it's just a backdrop and you'd be at this new place. It would be kind of dumb the way it was designed. They could have designed it slightly differently if they wanted to have flying. But in essence, the quick answer is no, there's not going to be any flying on Argus. Um, kind of interesting. I like the backdrop, um, so it's hard for me to complain about it. But eh, we have these flying mounts. I always kind of lean on the side of letting us fly. Uh, anything you regret moving in Legion? Now, this was talking about... This is the last question. Uh, this was talking about... Um, the abilities. So everyone got like everyone only has like eight abilities now. <laughs> That's a little bit hyperbole, but uh, everyone only has a few abilities now in comparison to what they used to have. Um, 
and he regrets removing utility abilities. So same way where he wished legendaries for more utility. Shroud of Concealment is the example he used, which they gave back in 7.1. And things like that might be brought back in the future. They are thinking of some specifically, but he didn't want to mention them in case they decided not to. And they, he didn't want to mention it, you know, because there was only a few that they're considering and not one for every class. But they are thinking about bringing back some more of the utility abilities. Um, really, Rep Paladin is one of the only ones that still has utilities with, like, the Kings and the Wisdom. Still can bop other people. Paladins in general can bop other people. Like, things like that where you're helping somebody else without any kind of DPS throughput. You're not getting any extra healing from it or anything, really. Um, you're just doing something to help. So Shot Concealment is not going to increase your DPS, but it can make you very useful. So things like that could be brought back, and I think that's good. Uh, maybe some more buffs will be bought, brought back uh, as a way to make certain classes that don't really have utility uh, more useful as well. So we can see on that. But that's it for this. Uh, it was a pretty good Q&A. Uh, as always, everyone have a good one.